My life and cough a couple gone, stay fresh dressed to impress with finesse, you know. Clothes like my flow, yeah, you know that they're impeccable. Lately I've been fake like I was fishing, but that ain't the case. Okay guys, so here we are in logic and we're having a look at isotope neutron 2's compressor section. If you haven't used Neutron 2 before, across the top section here we have six different plugins. The one highlighted in orange is the one we're looking at. And as we go through each one, it changes the GUI. This allows us to have the six different instances all within one nice GUI. So let's have a look at the compressor. Now I've loaded up my track here, Trouble in the Hood, which is out now, hopefully, April 2019. And we're just going to look at a small section of it. And I've got the vocal bus up here, which is this here. All I'm trying to do is live my life and cop a couple gums, stay fresh dressed to impress with finesse, you know. Now there's a couple of different sections in, in this song and the vocal has to compete with some very different elements. For example, there's a switch up in the track, which goes a bit like this. Very, very different sounds and textures, right? So what we need to do is use compression to make sure that the vocal maintains a presence in the song the whole time. And Neutron 2 has two compressors within it, so you can do a bit of heavy lifting. And not only does it have two compressors, but they can work in different modes as well. So we're just going to look at compressor 1, but just next to it, I've got compressor 2, and we can have them running in any order, look. This means we can have a bit of compression before some equalization, and then we can compress again afterwards, lifting with slightly different attacker release ratios or styles of compression. Once we break down this one, you can apply it to both. So the first thing to note on the GUI is we've got this vintage mode option here. If you've watched the equalizer video, remember we had soft saturation up there, but it didn't change the overall EQ, just some of its sound and texture behaviors. When we enable vintage mode on here, it changes the compressor. As you can see, it's no longer reading a modern readout. Instead, we've got a gain reduction readout. And we've got these three different ones because like lots of the other functionality in Neutron 2, it is multiband supported. For the moment, we'll go back to the modern style. We've got our gain control here right next to the vintage. We're just going to leave it on zero for the time being. Now we've got a nice detection mode. We've got RMS, peak and true. RMS is root mean squared, it's the average overall level. Peak detection means it's going to detect the peak level, which is really good for grabbing transients. And true functions a lot like RMS. However, um, RMS detection can sometimes cause aliasing and other issues on certain types of signals when compressed. True uses an extra little grunt in processing power to avoid those issues when they occur. The learn function we can see is disabled at the moment, but if we enable another channel, much like we did on the EQ, this will allow Neutron to detect good areas to have the split band in, and we'll look at doing that in just a moment. We've then got the reset switch, and we can reset that back to our default, and we can hit this just to enable some help. So here we've got a nice readout frequency, <coughs> frequency analyzer, and we'll display any compression occurring. And the three sections we've got here are our compressors. They're replicated three times over. If we bring our threshold down, we'll see we've got a compression ratio of two to one here with a knee of zero. Our current attack and release are 20 milliseconds and 100 milliseconds with a mix of 100%. Mix means we can have a blend of the original signal and the compressed signal, allowing us to do things like NY style compression really easily just by dragging this slider and creating a balance. We then get an input and we can choose our side chain there or another instance of neutron. So let's give this a compression ratio of around three over five. And we'll just dial the threshold back and we'll view the GUI and we'll see how it's going to display compression of the vocal for us. Now it's important to notice that it lost a bit of level and then managed to retain it shortly after. That is because of this function here which allows auto makeup gain. If we turn that off, we will in fact lose that level and we'll have to manually make up for it. 
So notice that time auto makeup gain didn't give us our values and our level back. We'll keep it enabled for the base of this tutorial, but I personally will usually do a custom makeup gain myself. Next to the automatic makeup gain, we have a release time adapter. Now many compressors will do this. It's adaptive release time based upon the signal and sometimes the BPM of the track. So if we have a release time of 100 milliseconds, but something in the region of sort of 80 milliseconds is working much better for the compressor to naturally pump, this will make an adjustment somewhere between the 80 and 100 millisecond marker, depending on what you have set. If we enable a, another instance here, we have a crossover. We'll now make use of the learn function to decide where that crossover is going to be and see if we agree. So the learn function has split it into the extreme highs. And the lows. If we were to introduce the third band and try and relearn, it will adjust accordingly. This time splitting extreme low and sub and perhaps areas we'd want to remove with the majority and the highest. Don't let me in the boot. All three areas can now be compressed and treated separately. As well, we've got different crossovers occurring here based upon the learn functionality and where the crossover points are. Lastly, we can use a sidechain input to control different areas of the compressor. If we were to take the middle section of vocal here, and for some reason we're going to imagine we want it slaved to the kick drum, we could choose our input here. And if we could take our drum pattern, which is bus one, we could change this input here. And we could do external band two. And as long as the drums are unsoloed, we should see that the drum pattern now triggers this middle compressor section. This allows us to control really specific areas. Let's say that this drum and vocal were fighting in a specific area. We wanted to prioritize that quick transient of the drum. We could do so like this. It's an excellent way to balance different areas of the mix that maybe fight together every now and then. If you want to give a brief bit of room to something like a drum transient, we can use the multiband or a small area of compression just to control that. That's been a deep dive into the Neutron 2 compressor. I hope it's been helpful for you and I will see you guys on the next video.